Good afternoon, my name is Lauren Wiggum. I'm a licensed mental health counselor here at Confluence Health. Thank you so much for joining this video presentation. Today we'll be talking a bit about coping with daily stress. So here we go. The outline for today's presentation looks like this. We'll go over a bit about stress and anxiety basics, talk about the fight or flight response, talk a bit about current events, think about some options for daily coping strategies, and then finally conclude with a model of wellness to review. My focus for today's presentation is a quote by Viktor Frankl. Uh, he survived internment camps during World War II. I really appreciate this quote because it provides hope for thinking about the space between an event that provokes anxiety or stress and the opportunity to find space to then utilize a coping strategy. So the quote goes like this, between stimulus and response, there is space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. So today's presentation is all about finding the space. Some of you may be wondering, what is stress? I'm using the words stress and anxiety interchangeably. I think it's important to think and understand what's going on in our bodies when the stress response is occurring. So anxiety occurs when the body and the brain perceives threat. The perception of threat triggers the fight, flight, freeze response. This is triggered by something, a stimulus coming in through your senses, something you see, something you hear, something that you think that causes this reaction. So the fight, flight, freeze response is a tool that your body uses to protect you from perceived danger. So this fight, flight, freeze response can be kind of tricky because it can also be triggered by threats to emotional well-being. So anxiety and its feeling is characterized by feelings of apprehension, self-doubt, tension, as well as physiological symptoms. So individuals experiencing anxiety or stress might notice increased heart rate, sweating, breathlessness. Um, let's see. So the fight, flight, freeze response is a natural response to threat. Um, the good news is we know what we are working with and we know we can talk through strategies to help move through anxiety and stress during your workday. And a note on recent events. Recently, our community and our nation, our world has been managing COVID-19. Um, the global COVID-19 pandemic has impacted our stress levels across the world, especially in healthcare settings. As the COVID-19 response carries into month four, stress levels have transitioned from what we initially saw from overdrive to now what we see with chronic daily stress. As the response continues, taking notice of stress and using coping strategies at community and company levels becomes ever more important. Another note, news coverage also impacts our stress levels. We think about our connection to social media and news outlets daily. They provide us options and information 24 hours a day. Recognizing how much information we can take in um, during the day is important to managing our stress levels. So our daily, daily work, excuse me, has shifted and changed during this time. But what hasn't changed is our unique capacity for resilience and growth. So back to that original Viktor Frankl quote, we need to find the space. And so in the next series of slides, I will discuss coping strategies that you can utilize during your day when you're seeing patients, going through tasks and working from home. Okay, so here we are, we're working to find the space. So by recognizing anxiety when it is happening and invoking the relaxation response, stress can be reduced quickly. So a new phrase that I came up with over quarantine has been something called bang. So we think about B, breathe. We wanna use diaphragmatic breaths to invoke that relaxation. Second, acknowledge. Think about the feeling, what's coming up for you? Is it stress? Is it feeling overwhelmed? Is it anxiety? Notice that feeling. Next step, 
Plan out what you're going to do. What's the coping strategy that you can use as you're going throughout your workday to calm and find the space? And G, go, go for it, try it out. Try out one of these strategies we talk about today, see if it works, and then continue with your day. Here we go. So here is diaphragmatic breathing in a nutshell. Diaphragmatic breathing has been shown to reduce stress, um, decrease the anxiety, and improve affect. So how we present to our coworkers and to our patients. Diaphragmatic breathing takes place in our belly, something where we're filling up our lungs with air. So when we take a diaphragmatic breath, we're allowing the belly to relax and fill with air, like so. We go in for five, hold, out for five. <laughs> I'm gonna try one more time. So go in for five, relax the belly, hold for one, out for five. So I think about five by one by five. So in for five, hold for one, out for five, times five. So do this five times. See how you feel. See if it helps you find the space. The next strategy that I offer is when in doubt, think about connecting with your senses. Connecting with our senses helps us come back to the present moment. So once you have reconnected with the present, you're allowed to give yourself that space again. Give yourself a positive affirmation return to the task at hand. So using mindfulness can improve focus on the task. Um, and so small problems don't become big problems later. So the strategy I offer for this is called five, four, three, two, one. And we think about it this way. Try to find in your environment five things you can see. Focus in on each one. Then close by to yourself, think about four things that you can touch. What's in front of you? What can you utilize to help your body shift to the present moment? In front of me, for example, I see my keyboard. It has some lovely clacky keys. I also have a mouse. There's lots of different textures available on a mouse. Next thing we might think about, three things we can smell. Breathing in, maybe you're eating lunch right now. Maybe you're thinking about eating lunch right now. Maybe you have a cup of coffee in front of you. Engage with your sense of smell. Um, moving on to the last things, we think about two more things we can feel, um, and then moving forward to one thing you can taste. So thinking about carrying gum or something else with you so that you can have that sense of taste during the day. This next strategy is something that can take place in the moment, again, to find that space, it's called noticing the periphery. This method was originally developed by the US military. So during times of anxiety, individuals can experience tunnel vision. So noticing the periphery invokes the relaxation response and allows you to see outside of self. So the instructions for this one, I apologize, there's a lot of them up there. But I think once you practice this strategy a few times, it can help you and you can come back to it and continue to practice. So the strategy says, find a spot at eye level that's located five to 10 feet in front of you. Focus your eyes for five seconds on that spot. Now, soften your focus until the spot becomes blurry. Hold that for five seconds. Still facing forward, shift your focus to your peripheral vision. Do this with both eyes simultaneously. Maintain the peripheral focus for 10 seconds. And then repeat steps one through five, five times. The number five is standing out today. Then notice the relaxation in your body. All right. Next strategy I'd like to introduce, and it's a tip for coping with daily stress, is thinking about passive muscle relaxation. Intentionally relaxing the muscles in our body invokes the parasympathetic nervous system response or our calm response. 
If it helps you to have prompts, there's tons of guided progressive relaxation exercises on YouTube. Also, many applications right now are available for free. Um, Headspace and Calm are two apps that individuals can utilize to find resources as well. So I'll do a quick practice of a passive muscle relaxation exercise. We'll just kind of think about your head and your shoulders today. This might be something you could utilize during your workday, before you're interacting with a coworker or a patient, when you're at your desk and you need a break. Really intentionally thinking about relaxing the muscles in your face, shoulders, arms, um, and continuing with your day. So this one goes like this. Start at the top of your head. Feel it from your crown, moving slowly down your scalp. Feel your ears relax. Feel your temples relax, then your brows. Feel your eyes relax, then your cheeks, then your nose, then your mouth, your lips, and your tongue. Feel your throat relax, then your neck. Feel your shoulders relax. Yes, even your shoulders. Allow them to relax. Focus on letting them drop and everything they've been holding for you. They get to rest too. Focus on your right hand. Let the calm flow from your right shoulder down your arm, through your wrists, then into each finger. Focus on your left hand. Mm -hmm. Let the calm flow from your left shoulder down your arm, through your wrists, then into each finger. And that passive muscle relaxation could be something that you continue throughout the rest of your body. So thinking about relaxing your chest, your stomach, your legs, your feet, all the way down to the tips of your toes. In the past few slides, we've been looking over different options to invoke the calm response after anxiety or stress occurs. This next strategy addresses the power of thought. I think Lisa Hayes says it really well here. Be careful how you are talking to yourself because you are listening. Our thoughts have the ability to make us feel better or worse. So noticing the direction of your thoughts while you are stressed, gently challenging those thoughts and replacing them with more accurate thoughts can also reduce stress during the day. A great question to ask yourself during this is, what would you tell a friend? What would you tell them during times of stress, during times of anxiety? Tell that to yourself. One example of modifying thoughts during stressful situations might be thinking about something that's true for you. So thinking, I am prepared, I'll do well, I'm safe. Taking that big diaphragmatic breath and moving forward with your day. The next series of slides are tips to decrease stress during the day. So we've addressed both the physiological, the body response, as well as the power of thought. So these next options are strategies to help reduce stress levels during the day by organizing and thinking through what you'd like to see for yourself. So here's a few different options. Connecting with something outside of yourself, going for a walk, looking up at the sky, watching the clouds pass by, interacting with your coworkers, or if you're working from home with your animals or children. Um, next one might be cleaning up your surroundings. It's easier to stay focused and attentive to the tasks at hand if your surroundings are clean. Finally, prioritize what absolutely needs to get done versus what should get done. And that ties into the points on these next slides. Thinking about Stop yourself from accidentally multitasking. Focus on one task at hand and start small. Chunk up tasks and organize a to-do list by category. So yes, we might consider organizing a to-do list. And finally, accept what you cannot control. So in the course of a day, if you can't get to all of the tasks at hand, pause, give yourself that break, find the space, and allow yourself to come back to those tasks the next day. Finally, I'd like to talk through a wellness model, thinking through some opportunities to tie in wellness, health, and well-being outside of work contexts. 
So this wellness model offers the idea that wellness exists outside of work as well. So thinking about engaging with multiple different aspects of self can bring about wellness. Thinking about addressing our creative selves, our coping self, the social interactions with others. Thinking about our essential self, finding opportunities for self-care and interacting with others. And our physical self, so focusing in on exercise and nutrition, so that we are finding an opportunity to bring balance to all aspects of our health and well-being. So, like I just said, the ability to cope with daily stress is influenced by many different factors, and this looks different for everyone. Thinking about using health and wellness practices outside of the workplace contributes to the ability to manage daily stressors. It contributes to that ability to find the space that Viktor Frankl offers. Um, this indivis indivisible self model of wellness is just one way we might think about a wellness model. There's lots of other wellness models out there and available for you. So I leave you with a few thoughts. The thought on this screen says, change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. And I think that ties in so well with the Viktor Frankl quote I mentioned earlier. If you find the space, take the pause between stimulus and response, use one of these strategies that we've talked through today or your own or a combination of the above and think about ways that you can calm and manage your stressors during the day. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate being here today. Take good care.